I Want You. A short story by Kevin L. Kaufman. Jim took up a night job as a patient watcher in a hospital. The job was easy enough. All he had to do was sit with the patient in the room and make sure they had everything they needed to be comfortable. Most people told him he was crazy for doing it. Don't you realize what kind of weirdies there are in that hospital at night? They said to him. You never know what to make of them. Oh, nonsense, Jim had told them. These are only people trying to get better. A lot of them can't help it. Now it happened, Jim's first night fell on All Hallows' Eve. A full moon shone bright, bathing the world in a golden color that could mesmerize. When Jim arrived at the hospital, he grabbed a contact radio and walked up to the head nurse. You're in room 211, she told him, and accompanied Jim to the room. As Jim walked inside, he noticed the room was dark. No light was on, not even the television. He could see a large hospital bed, and on top of it, a large old woman with short white hair and beady little eyes that were closed, sound asleep. Her throaty mutters cut through the silence. The head nurse told Jim that the patient's name was Yule June, and she was recovering from an open-heart surgery. Her family will be in tomorrow morning, she said. She should sleep throughout the night, so please keep everything turned off. If you need anything, call me on the radio. And the head nurse moved swiftly away, silently closing the door behind her. Then there was darkness. Jim could see the mere shape of the room, and he was able to scope out a chair to sit in and relax. As he got comfortable, he fixed his eyes on Yule June. The lady was still fast asleep. Jim sighed and began to get lost in his thoughts to pass the time. But in the middle of the night, Jim began to hear an eerie creak coming from the bed. He looked over at Yule June, barely able to make her out in the darkness. She looked to be in the same position she was in while she slept, but something was different. Jim felt a sudden chill run down his back. He stood up and slowly began walking toward Yule June until she came more into view. That's when he saw something that nearly stopped his heart. As dark as it was, Jim could make out that Yule June was smiling at him. This wasn't a pleasant smile either. Her eyes squinted to where they were almost closed and her mouth was twisted into the widest grin possible that showed her gangly yellow front teeth. And she was looking right at Jim, not moving a muscle. Jim didn't know what to do. He tried to smile back, but Yule June kept smiling. Can I get you anything? Jim asked. No answer. Ten minutes went by, and Yule June continued to smile, that creepy smile at him. Finally, Jim decided to call the head nurse. But the head nurse didn't answer. He tried again, still nothing. Staring at the woman's chilling smile, he spoke to her. What do you need? What are you wanting? Jim asked, near yelling. Then, Yuljun began to speak in a hoarse voice that made the hair on the back of Jim's neck stand up. I want you, she said. I want you. 
That morning, Jim went to the front desk and told them what had happened. Please don't put me in that room again, Jim begged. The hospital secretary said she would try her best. Jim began to work in different rooms each night from then on, but a few weeks went by before he was told that he was to go to Yule June's room again. She's dying, the head nurse said, and she specifically stated she wanted you. Jim walked back into the room that evening, but he wasn't alone. Gathered around were a few large men and women, Yule June's family. Jim didn't say a word to them, nor them to him. They just stared at Yule June, who stared at Jim with that chilling smile. In the middle of the night, Yule June died. As scared as he was, Jim felt a bit sorry for her. As members of her family exited the room, one large man stopped and stared at Jim. She wants you, he said. Jim didn't know what to say. A chill ran up his back that turned into a cold pain. What does she want me to do? he asked the man. The man looked deep into Jim's eyes. She wants you, the man said again, and then walked away with the rest of her family. They buried Yule June in the old cemetery by the church. This always gave Jim a bit of a fright as he had to pass that church to and from the hospital. As time passed, he started to get used to it. But one cool, crisp autumn night, when the moon cast its golden glow upon the earth, Jim was walking from a friend's house. He had to pass the cemetery on his way and felt a chill on his way back. As he began to pass the last headstone, he heard a voice. Jim looked around. Nobody was there. He started walking again, thinking it was just the wind. But the voice said again, I want you. This time, Jim began to get scared and started walking quickly. The voice was heard even louder this time. Jim took off running. He gasped for breath as he sprinted across the pathway, leading to his house. With the door in sight, Jim dove for the handle, but something pinned him down. Something had grabbed him. Jim didn't wait to see what it was. He just struggled and struggled to get inside his house. As he burst inside, he locked the door tight, but the voice still lingered on the other side. I want you. Catching his breath, Jim finally began to think about the situation. It couldn't be, he said. She is dead. He thought it was someone playing a joke. He then thought it may be one of Yule June's family members trying to get a rise out of him. But how would they know where I live, he thought. Out of curiosity, Jim decided to just take a small peek through the peephole. Staring back at him was the smile of Yule June's rotting corpse pressed against the doorway. Jim's heart gave out and he died. According to the town gossip, Yule June's family paid off Jim's remaining debts and even bought him a plot in the cemetery, right next to Yule June. That's when the rumors started going around. Of course, most everyone in the town believed it was just a scary campfire tale. 
but it was the strangest thing. Those who went to Jim's burial said that Yule June's grave looked as if it had been freshly buried, even though her death was months ago.